Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up SDL3 with the D programming language on the Linux operating system. Specifically, I'm going to be using Ubuntu and I'll give you a few different options for setting up the libraries. And then we'll go ahead and create a little hello world just to make sure that our program's running. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, if you're not familiar with what SDL is, SDL is a basically uh, the simple direct media layer. Uh, and it's a cross-platform library designed to provide low-level access to things like audio, keyboard, mouse, joystick, uh, and various graphics libraries, OpenGL, Direct3D, Vulkan, Metal, etc. So it's a really, really cool library that basically does this job of setting up a window uh, on basically every operating system that most people use uh, with the same code base. So you don't have to learn a bunch of different APIs like the Win32 API or X11 or Wayland or Coco or all these different libraries here. So anyways, it's an awesome framework and it's importantly a uh, library that's written in C. Now that's important because the D programming language really talks nicely to C uh, libraries. I mean, D can talk to other library code as well, um, but D works really, really nice with C. Uh, and there are specifically, there's other bindings available for various languages. So you can click on that and just take a peek in case this gets updated. Uh, but we're gonna be using the bind BC uh, bindings here for us. Okay, so uh, that's just a little bit of background knowledge here. We'll go ahead and start setting up SDL3 here. Uh, now there's two different ways that we can set up SDL. So probably the easiest thing to do is you can search for the package here, something like libsdl3-dev, and you'll want the developer versions here. And on your package manager, uh, hopefully it'll come up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see here. Uh, lib app search uh, didn't find it. I bet I'll be able to find the two libraries here. Uh, that's because I'm on a little bit older version of Ubuntu here, 24. Um, so you might need to um, do an update here to find those uh, packages. Um, so if this doesn't work, sudo apt uh, install lib uh, stl3 dev, then um, you'll have to uh, probably install by source, which is what I'm gonna do, which is again, easy enough to do on Linux, uh, but this is gonna be the fast path, okay? So that's the very first thing that you can do. And that's gonna download the, uh, basically the shared uh, library for using SDL3. Now, if that doesn't work, the other thing you can do, uh, we could just go to the GitHub page here uh, and install the latest version. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go to SDL. I'll show you how to do build, build this from uh, source here. Let's clone the repository. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to set this up in my uh, downloads here. Let's clone here. I might already have SDL. Uh, let's do an SDL3. All right, so that'll just take a moment here. Uh, some of the tools that you're going to need uh, while this is building here, just to show you here, you're going to need uh, CMake uh, to do the build here, and then you're going to need Make here, okay, at a minimum. Uh, and you're probably also going to need some version of the GCC compiler. Um, so those are the versions that I have. Um, but uh, so hopefully you have recent versions of that. Okay, so let's go into the SDL3 library here. Uh, I'm going to make a build uh, directory here. Let's cd into the build. Uh, and then I'll run cmake, uh, go up a directory here. And this is just gonna take a moment to basically check to make sure that you have a C compiler and some of the other tools. Again, if you if this fails for whatever reason, then just pay attention to the messages and uh, install whatever dependency might be missing. Like the build essential tools or these types of things are probably what's needed. You might need a audio library or something, um, but anyways, uh, that should just work relatively quick in 20 seconds or so. Uh, and then once I've got the build, that should have made a make file. Again, if you prefer to use CMake to generate other sort of build systems like Ninja or um, whatever IDE you like, that's also fine. But let's just go ahead and do make. I'll do make J16 to do a build in parallel. And this is going to compile the SDL library here. Uh, if for whatever reason it doesn't work by doing a parallel build, just try make uh, and see if that works. And if that still doesn't work, again, just pay attention to the error messages uh, and you can do your build here, okay? So pretty soon we're gonna see here it linked and built this library. That's what we're looking for, libsdl3, uh, the shared object, uh, uh, that's our library file. Uh, and we can also do sudo make install and that will set up the path for us, okay? That's also gonna set up the path and it's also gonna set up things like pkg config. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, take a look at that here. And that'll make it really easy to use tools like pkg config. Uh, for instance, if you wanna see 
uh, what was installed here. So if I look at the C flags in the libraries here for SDL3, you can see exactly the location that uh, SDL3 was installed to. Okay, so we can manually link to things here. I'm going to show you with dub how this works, and maybe I'll do it in another way as well, but I'm basically just going to show you with um, dub to, to set up uh, SDL3. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do in this video for now. Um, okay, um, so with that said, we've got SDL3 um, installed, so let's go ahead and get rid of that, and let's go ahead and look at how to install uh, or work with SDL in the D programming language on Linux. So uh, it, just for reference here, if you go to the language reference here, I just want to point out there's this nice section on interfacing to C. There's also with other languages here. Uh, but again, D is designed to fit comfortably within uh, the C compiler. Um, as far as I know, I mean, there's an attempt to be like 100% ABI compatible, like a lot of you know other languages are that interface to C. Uh, that's the same thing for, for D. D also uniquely has this import C project, which allows you to import or compile .C files directly. Uh, so you can check that out here. Uh, and there's more information if you did, for whatever reason, want to just call the C functions uh, directly in SDL, you can do that. I'll probably do a separate video on that for manually creating a binding, but this is the common case that I want folks to be uh, just using a, a package here. So anyways, uh, with that said, let's go to packages. Um, and if you just search for SDL, you'll find a bunch of different uh, libraries that can work with uh, SDL. Um, so SDL3 library specifically is what we're interested in. Um, so there's various wrappers for these uh, things here. Uh, some of them are for SDL2, but we're looking for SDL3 and bindbc-sdl is one of the common ones. Um, so that's when we use dub with the deep programming language, uh, how we're going to set things up here. Um, if you're not familiar with the deep programming language, again, you can go to my website, um, course.m.io, and find all the videos here or search them on YouTube if you need more familiarity with it. Uh, but let's just go ahead and set up uh, I'll assume you're familiar with uh, dub otherwise. Uh, I'll just do a dub init here. Uh, JSON is fine. A Linux setup. This is going to be a minimal uh, D application. Uh, choose your license that's appropriate. And we're going to want to add a dependency. Now, again, if you just type in something like SDL3, it's not going to find that. So, again, we're looking for bind bc uh, SDL, uh, which is the name of this package. Um, or if you're using dub later, you could just do dub add bind bc sdl. Okay, so that's the idea. So go ahead and hit enter. That'll add the dependency. That's the only thing we need. Um, so we're good to go there. Okay, uh, so now if I look at my dub.json uh, file, you'll see that dependency here bind bc sdl, um, which uh, we will use uh, shortly here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run dub here. Uh, and the first time you run uh, dub, it's got to fetch the you know version of the package here. There's a hidden directory. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, just find it. It's in the .dub directory. Um, and somewhere in here, if I look at packages, I can probably find, yeah, there's uh, bind bc sdl just if you want to see like what's going on here you can see i've installed a bunch of different versions of it over time uh, but these are the actual like files here somewhere just in case uh, you are curious about that so anyways that's uh that's that here okay so let's go ahead and uh, let me move back to the correct directory here and that's just a little information about what dub is doing for you uh, in case you're curious now if i just run this with dub run again it's going to say edit source uh, app uh, to set up our project here. Uh, so let's go into source here. Uh, and well, that's all the program's doing. It's just printing out to, to edit this file. Uh, we actually want to do something in SDL now. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and import uh, the bind bc SDL uh, library. We'll just kind of keep doing this one step at a time. We'll compile. That works fine here. So that means we found it. So that's the first test that you can do here. Uh, now let's go ahead and try some stuff with SDL. So something like creating a window, uh, SDL create window, uh, dlang SDL3 uh, window, uh, and we're going to need a size 320 by say 240, and a uh, flag here SDL window always, uh, let's see, always on top is the one that I always remember to do, uh, something like that here. I can get rid of this here. Uh, let's do something like SDL delay for 3,000 seconds. We just want to make sure that our SDL is working here. Uh, SDL destroy window 
uh, and I'll pass back that uh, pointer so we know what to destroy here. Okay, let's just try this. I'm not expecting this to work, but this is a basic SDL program just so you have something. Uh, it says, okay, program exit with code minus 11. So that basically means segmentation fault. Okay, uh, if we want, we can run this in GDB. Okay, just in case you run into this problem here. Uh, let's look at the source code here. Let's start. Uh, and basically, uh, let's see here. I'll move out of the way. Maybe that's the easiest way to do this. Uh, there I go, out of the way. Uh, let's just execute the uh, next line of code here, and I get a segmentation fault immediately, right? SDL create window is seg faulting. Why is it seg faulting? Okay, well, we haven't loaded our dynamic library, okay? Uh, so let's go back to bind uh, BC just so you can see exactly how this works. I think it gives a little bit of information on the, uh, let me go on the GitHub page probably. You can look at it on the, the dub thing here, uh, but let's do that. Let's scroll down here. They got an image, the official repository, and then there's some information about how to get started, right? So we added our dependency um, in the JSON. You can, you can decide if you want to link in uh, statically. Um, that, that is also fine. I'm gonna do the shared library strategy just because again that's something that they show here um, and uh, a few things here so we're missing uh, some other things from our starter code we need to initialize SDL and we also need to quit SDL here okay I'm gonna show you how I set things up here um, you know if you want to use the dynamic bindings this is also um, not a bad idea now there's some uh, helper code here for getting us started so let's try to work with um, what is on this page here um, and I'll go ahead and just pop this to the side. And I'll probably just post this code sample in the description um, just in case you want to run this. Um, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and let's kind of just copy this in here uh, and work with it just a little bit here. Uh, let's do this here. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit um, maybe strange here for a moment. Let me compress the code just a little bit here. Uh, let's paste this in here. So paste. All right. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Windows thing because we don't really care about that right now. And uh, let's see here. Um, I can duplicate these. These don't matter as much. I'm going to leave this in just for now because um, I like to just abstract this away. In fact, uh, since I like doing that, let me just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to open up a file called SDL abstraction. D, and then I can just paste this in here. And basically what I'm going to do here is in D we have module constructors. So I'm just going to create uh, a shared static this module constructor. Uh, let's just wrap all this around here. Okay. Uh, and I'll talk about why I'm doing this uh, in a moment here. It just kind of makes things easy. Um, and let me get rid of the comments for now. Uh, because we can see them on the right side of our screen as well. Um, just so we could see, uh, you know, focus on the code for a moment. And if this looks scary, don't worry too much. This is basically the important line here uh, for Linux here, right? Uh, so there's stuff if you do things on Windows, I'll do that in a separate Windows uh, thing. And if it makes you more comfortable, uh, sometimes I also do like a version uh, Linux and just wrap, you know, this uh, here. Uh, in fact, let's leave that there since we are on Linux here. Um, okay, so I created this SDL abstraction here uh, in my source directory. Let me go ahead and show you that, right? So source and then SDL abstraction, there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and now in my app here, import SDL abstraction, abstraction. Okay, uh, and sometimes I just call this like platform or something like that. So you can name it whatever file you want. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and run this with dub now. And uh, interestingly, we get our window now. Okay, so things are starting to work here. Um, so now we've successfully loaded our library. Now we're not quite done. I wanna show you just a few other SDL things here. So usually what I do in this module constructor, you can either do it here or you could do it in your main. Uh, but again, just to sort of abstract things here, uh, I wanna initialize some subsystems. So usually when I initialize, uh, I'm just going to set up the uh, flags for this. Um, let's see, SDL init flags, uh, SDL uh, init video, and init events. 
So something like that here. Uh, and then I say something like if SDL, uh, the init function for the flags, um, you know, if it initializes, say uh, SDL uh, was initialized, something like that is you know, reasonable. Else, uh, right, failed to initialize sub systems. Okay. Uh, and this will seg fault if SDL. Uh, or give us a message here if the library is not uh, opening otherwise, okay? So this is gonna initialize things like if you want video or you do SDL net audio or you know these types of things here. I just want events and uh, video for now to do some rendering. Uh, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do here is just going to be to do a shared static and then a destructor for this module. Uh, and then I wanna make sure that I call the SDL quit function, okay? Uh, to just terminate things. And that makes it really easy um, that I don't have to, you know, SDL will be de-initialized. Now, if you're building a game engine or something, you might want control over when these events happen. So again, this is just for an example to get you set up, and then you can decide, again, what you need to do here. Uh, so let's just say uh, shutting down initialized sub systems. Okay. All right. Okay, so hopefully that makes enough sense. Let's look at the uh, code here. Uh, let me do something here just to make this a little bit easier for you. Okay, so you can see it all at once here. Uh, on the right side uh, of my screen here, I'm importing my SDL abstraction, which will take care of, importantly, loading the SDL library. I've got a specific way to do that if I'm on Linux and I can change that on various platforms if I wanna search a different directory, um, you know, you can provide a path here or, you know, where that specific version of the shared library is. So there's some options there, uh, but otherwise this uh, will, should, should work here. Uh, oh, and uh, of course, uh, one little bug here, since I'm using right line, um, I should probably write to standard error and these sorts of things here, but uh, you get the point here. This video is about uh, setting up SDL. Uh, let's see what else I made. Oh, little mistake here. Flags. I thought I'd make it without making any mistakes, but there we are. So we got our SDL uh, window here. So that's pretty cool. And going forward, uh, just so you can see all of the code here, um, I will point you to, um, we'll either do more in this particular playlist, just showing things on uh, D. I mean, here is all the code for otherwise getting set up uh, for SDL. Uh, I have explanations of how these things are working, like create window and so on, on my uh, C++ playlist. So you can check that out if I don't have it explicitly in the D playlist. Um, and it's the same exact SDL function calls, okay? So anyways, you can see what that is. Uh, occasionally you'll have to cast things to like a const char star or something because D strings are different, but um, that's, that's the basic idea. So I'll probably eventually do a little project at some point just so you can see that. Uh, but this should get you set up otherwise on Linux. And as mentioned, uh, feel free to check out the D programming language series here. I'll add the D stuff uh, here under game and graphics programming for SDL as we add more videos. Uh, so you can always check it out there. So anyways, folks, let me leave this up here. I think we'll go ahead and end this video. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed getting set up with the D programming language. There's a few ways to do it. The D bindings are the easiest uh, with bindbc.sdl. Uh, at some point, I'll just show you how to do this manually if you want to write your own C binding or how to interface. Uh, meaning I'll just show you like a few functions and the basic idea uh, so you'll understand exactly what bindbc.sdl is doing. Otherwise, stay tuned for other platforms as I set those up, and I'll look forward to otherwise chatting with you folks in the comments if you have other questions. Uh, and as mentioned, for this particular video, I will post the code in the description if you want to just copy and paste it to test your installation. That's fine. Um, it's just going to pop up some window with whatever happens to be in the graphics memory for a three seconds, 3,000 milliseconds, and uh, that'll be it. Then you'll know you're good to go with SDL. All right, so with that said, go ahead and create something cool with SDL, and I'll look forward to uh, seeing your creations out there in the wild. Take care.